On part two of our getting started with Daz 3D tutorial, we're going to take the figure that we created in our last tutorial and we're going to drop her into a scene. So in this one, we're going to talk about how to load in an environment as well as how to load in a pose preset, and then we're going to fine tune our pose a little bit for our scene. So if you haven't seen the, um, the first video in this series, go ahead and check that one out, and uh, then we'll jump right in. So over on the left, uh, be sure you have your smart content tab selected and we're gonna go to environments. So we're gonna load in an environment um, and we're gonna go to architecture and interior. So here I have all of my interior scenes that I can load in. And let's see, there's one that I had in mind in particular. There we go, we're gonna do the industrial loft complete. So this is a complete set, so it's got everything we need, all of the props and everything. Probably isn't gonna have lights in, but that's okay, we can, we can work with that. So in order to load that in, it's okay if you already have your figure loaded in, it's okay if you don't have your figure loaded in yet, you can do this in any order, but since I've already got my figure here, I'm just gonna double click the industrial loft complete. And then that will load in our scene. Again, depending on your hardware, this might take anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, as well as um, depending on how uh, complicated the geometry in the scene is. All right, and there is our scene. So you can pan all around. And what I'm going to do is just sit our figure on the couch over here. So we're gonna double click our figure to select her and then go over to poses. And we're gonna search by function or sort by function. And we're gonna do sitting. There we go. So these are just a bunch of generic sitting poses that, I, uh, that I've downloaded. And some of them are kind of for, for high seats and some of them are for lower seats. So you wanna to try to find something that's appropriate for your scene so you can make the min minimum amount of adjustments necessary. And this couch looks like it's kind of low. So we're gonna select a low sitting, uh, low sitting pose. So give me, let me go ahead and find one of those. Actually, let's do this one. We'll try this reclining pose. I think that one will work okay. So we'll double click that and she should stay right where she is, but she's gonna go into this sitting pose. And so now we have to move her over to the couch. So as you can see, we have these three arrow controls. These should be selected by default. If they aren't, you can select them by clicking the arrows up there at the top. Um, and then they just move along the plane. So there's the, um, you can move along a Z plane, the X plane or the Y plane goes uh, up and down. So we're just gonna move her back to the couch there. Let's zoom in. And we're gonna see if we can make that work with this uh, with this sofa. So let's move her on back. And you'll notice that when she collides with it, she won't stop, like she'll just keep going through whatever objects. So you wanna take great care to make sure that her body isn't colliding with anything. Um, it's actually okay if you do that, as long as it's off camera and you can't really tell. So there we go. So as we can see, her arm is supposed to be up on the couch. So I'm gonna see if I can rotate her a little bit and make her arm appear on the back of the couch. So if you want to rotate, you can either hit the rotate control up here and then your directional movement controls switch to rotational controls. Um, you can also control everything over here on the right. So like right now I'm rotating along the Y axis. So you can do it that way if you want. That way you can also put in specific numerical values if you know exactly how many degrees you want her to rotate. But um, I very rarely use that. There we go. And now her her elbow is kind of colliding with the couch. So I'm gonna make her raise that a little bit. We're gonna click her forearm. And let's see if we can bend her forearm up a little. There we go. So now it looks like it's resting on the, uh, on the couch. And yeah, let's go a little bit higher with that. There we go, I think that'll be good. Excellent. And I think we're gonna take a picture from the front. So we're gonna have her, see if I can have her rotate her head around without it looking too awkward. Let's just do it right there and then we'll do a picture from the side. There we go. So far so good. And then the last thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna give her a different expression on her face because she's kind of uh, has a blank expression right now. So we're gonna go to poses. Um, so under poses, you might have an expression um, menu. You also might have to go to by function and look up expression that way. I think that's where it stores the Genesis 3 expressions to, by default, but I believe the Genesis 8 expressions have their own sub menu. We're gonna select that, and I've got one in mind where it's gonna give her kind of a kind of a smirk. There we go. And now let's see how that looks in iRay. So I've been on uh, 
texture shaded view, so let's go to IRA rendering. There we go. So it looks pretty good so far, but as you can see, it's really dark in here uh, for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and render this one with a camera, which I didn't do in the last video. So we're going to create a camera by going over here to the Create Camera button. Create a new camera. Left click that. You can rename it if you want, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to leave it as Camera. And then Accept. So now when we go up here to where it says Perspective View, and if we click on that, um, we now have a camera there. So if I click that, then it'll switch to the Camera View. And I'm going to go back to Texture Shaded, and I'm going to get our camera in position where we want it. So normally I use the camera uh, view to set up my shots, and then if I need to change anything major in the scene, I use Perspective View so I can pan around without messing up where I want my shot to be. There we go, and we're going to point that target right at her. Actually, let's go down a little bit. There we go, get a little bit more of her in frame. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and create a light using one of my favorite uh, simple lighting methods, which is to use a primitive as a lighting source. Um, I'm just going to speed through this part, so if you need to know how to do this, be sure to check out my video on using, a, using primitives as a lighting source. There we go, so now that I've got that light dropped in, you can see it's starting to look a lot better and a lot more well lit. I'm just going to fine tune my camera placement just a little bit and get that where I want it. I'm going to try to get as much as our subject in frame as I can reasonably do. There we go, and now we're going to get ready to render. So first of all, you want to double check before you render and make sure that you don't have any uh, any any objects interfering with each other. You don't want to you know, make sure like her arm isn't going through the couch or her hand isn't going through her body and everything looks good right now. So when you get ready to render, we're going to go over to Render Settings. So always double check your render settings before you hit the Render button. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally rendered something at the wrong resolution. So right now I've got it set at Full HD. That's what I do the vast majority of my renders at. Um, if it's really important for you to have a high resolution, there are other options. You can go all the way up to Ultra HD uh, 4K resolution. I have a 4K monitor that I'm using currently, but um, most of my stuff I render for uh, standard Full HD, which is a uh, 1920 by 1080, 1080p. All right, and once you have everything set, um, I'm just going to render, render to new window. You can render directly to a file if you want. Just be sure you give it an image name and an image path so you know where your uh, scene is going. And oh, one more thing I forgot to mention about cameras is you want to make sure that your headlamp is turned off. That will give us much more control over our lighting. Uh, that might affect things a little bit. No, not too bad. That still looks pretty good. And I did the uh, light on the right just to create a nice kind of shadow on her uh, on the left side, on her right side there. There we go. And so like before, uh, depending upon your hardware and how complex your scene is and your model is, it might take anywhere from a couple of minutes to an hour or so to render, um, to render a scene. Uh, if you're rendering off the CPU like I did when I first got started, there were some scenes that I did that took like 36 hours just to render a single image. Um, all right, so once you've got everything set, I've got it set to go to a new window. We're going to hit the render button and see what it looks like. There we go, and that is our finished render. Uh, it took my computer just short of 12 minutes to render the entire scene. So a couple of uh, a couple of things to mention. Um, you'll notice there's a kind of a checkerboard pattern behind the windows. That's because this was rendered against a transparent background. So if you were to, if I were to use this image for anything, I would import it into Photoshop and put another background over the back of it. Otherwise, depending on how you use it, it'll just show up white or black, or it might even just show up with that checkerboard pattern. Um, so just, uh, yeah, if you do this and you see that, those are just transparent pixels. So again, just be sure you use a backdrop for it. And also, I forgot to mention before I rendered um, that there are several different rendering engines 
that you can use uh, with DAS. So if you look up here at the top left, I've got the iRay engine selected, which is my preferred rendering engine. There are some third-party engines, but I've uh, there. I mean, I've I've been able to get great results with iRay. If you use something like OpenGL or 3D Delight, um, it will render much much faster. But in my opinion, the quality isn't nearly as good. I've seen people get decent results with 3D Delight, but I've never really been able to. So I recommend sticking with iRay. And that covers it. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of my other stuff and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and if there's anything you want to see me cover, be sure to leave me a comment below and I'll see about doing that in a future video. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.